today is Christmas Day and we wish you from the Staffordshire Moorlands a very happy Christmas. Isaiah chapter 52 verses 7 to 10 How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation. To say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, you watchmen, lift up their voice. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes, burst into song of joy together. You ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sign of the nation and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, 
but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. When I was a girl of probably seven, eight, I imagined, it seems rather unlikely now, you may find this difficult to believe, that I always fancied myself as a dancer. And I would go along on a Saturday morning to my ballroom dancing class in Walkden and I'd get dropped off there and we'd have a couple of hours dancing and then somebody would come and pick me up. I had absolutely no rhythm whatsoever. <laughs> I was very awkward. Try, try as I could, as I would, I just could not get some of these dances. I am in awe of the people who go in for Strictly. I very often found myself sort of shuffling to the outside corner so that my uh, woodenness, as my dad would have said, would not be exposed. I was afraid of getting it wrong. I was afraid of looking foolish. And my recollection is that I wasn't on my own in feeling that way. But I was desperate to be a dancer. From time to time, uh, people from other classes would come and join us, people who were much better than we were, and they'd be drafted in from outside to come and help us, people who really knew what they were doing and who got alongside us awkward young people and helped us. These people were light on their feet, they had a passion and a spring in their step, which quite literally sometimes swept us into a new dance, far more energetic, far more beautiful than we had felt we were capable of. It gave me confidence going to that class, even though it was never really going to be. That knowledge that someone who knew what they were doing was guiding me and supporting me. It instilled within me a passion and an energy which I think I probably have hopefully have carried into other uh, paths of life. Today is Christmas Day and as this day rolls round again we are reminded of the God who broke into our human existence, who came to where we were, the brokenness of our humanity, struggling to get the steps right, afraid of looking foolish, sometimes a bit lost, the God who came in the person of Jesus and took us by the hand and invited us into a new dance. Sometimes we refer to Christmas, don't we, as the time when God pitched his tent in our back garden. And I really love that image. It's a helpful image. But the, the trouble with it is that it, it leaves out some of the movement and the passion and the energy, the outburst of creativity. Imagine being there at that moment that must have happened, uh, which exploded when this child was born. When he came, he came to do something utterly transformative. He took us by the hand and led us into a new dance. So often we lose sight of that and at this time of the year especially, we try to replace some of that with tinsel and food and activity, with decorations, with parties. Not that we shouldn't party, we should. But somebody said to me the other day, sometimes when all of that is over, you can still feel a little bit empty. Well, <clears throat> when you reflect on the state of our world, on our own troubles, and wonder what it is that this child whose birth we celebrate today has to say to us, I am reminded that people in every generation 
are the same. For that child was born into poverty, into division and war, a society that was in some ways governed by shame and oppression. God came into the messiness and untidiness of the world, took us by the hand and invited us to dance. It is still the greatest gift the world has ever known. And when we choose to enter into that dance, then we too can be transformed enable to do things we never thought possible when we really hear the story of what happened 2000 years ago and we are swept up and carried along by that extravagant love it is transformative in our lives today even if like me there are things you have to just let go of, like the idea of being a dancer. Still, God encourages us by the birth of this child to use that creativity in different ways. What would be good news for you today on Christmas Day? What would that look like? I think I want to say that <clears throat> no matter where you are today or what things you're facing, what things you are going through, that the birth of this child is still transformative. The one who comes as the embodiment of good news, the one foretold by the prophets who, you know, Isaiah the prophet says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring that good news, who proclaim the gospel of peace. And then John's gospel, such beautiful words which are so well worn in the hearing. In the beginning was the word. The light which was light to all people, who whoever would receive him. And the light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness has never overcome it. Wherever you are today, whatever you're doing, here in the Staffordshire Moorlands, we wish you a blessed and a happy Christmas. The blessing of the Christ child who comes to make all things new. Amen. Light and light to all he brings.
So let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the breaking in of your kingdom in the birth of the Christ child. We give you thanks that he came not to the powerful and the mighty, but to those who were struggling, to those who didn't see away from one day to the next. To those who were lonely and poor. To those whose lives, whose existences were hard day to day. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We thank you that his birth came as good news to those who really needed to hear it. And so we offer you our own stories on this Christmas day. We offer you all the ways in which we too need desperately to hear good news. And we pray that on this day of celebration you will break in once more and come and sit beside us. That you would speak to us of that way of peace, of new life, of forgiveness and wholeness and healing. And that you would give us those angels who will sit alongside us and support us and help us. Be with us, we pray, as we continue to long for the breaking in of your kingdom, the kingdom of the Prince of Peace, in the words he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.